You hear that? That's the awkward silence of a family dinner after you just got caught vaping. Most vapes contain high levels of nicotine and disappointment. <sighs> brought to you by The Real Cost and the FDA. This episode is brought to you by Kia's first three-row all-electric SUV. The Kia EV9. With available all-wheel drive and seating for up to seven adults. With a zero to 60 speed that thrills you one minute. And available reclining lounge seats that unwind you the next. Visit kia.com slash EV9 to learn more. Ask your Kia dealer for availability. No system, no matter how advanced, can compensate for all driver error and or driving conditions. Always drive safely. Listen to the 48 Hours podcast for shocking murder cases and compelling real-life dramas from one of television's most watched true crime shows. Go behind the scenes of each episode with award-winning CBS News correspondents and producers in Postmortem, a weekly deep dive. Listen to 48 Hours wherever you get your podcasts. All right, what's up, guys? Welcome to another episode of the T-Moss Boss Show. Then today's episode. So, I'm going to be talking on the video game Destiny 2. For those that don't know what Destiny 2 is, Destiny 2 at one point in time was my, like, favorite game to play. Like, I could sit down, play that game for hours, couldn't take me away from it, was grinding for it. The thing was this. I was grinding for stuff in there, and I didn't even know what I was grinding for, meaning that I was just playing the game just to play it. Like, I didn't really care for no grinding. I didn't care for none of that. Like, I just played the game because I actually enjoyed it. You know, if I did get some exotics, uh, armor and weapons, or legendary armor and weapons, I'm like, oh, okay, cool, I'll take it. But, you know, at the end of the day, I'm like, look, if there's a weapon that could get me through a mission, I don't care what weapon it is. As long as it gets me through the mission, all right? So, but I one thing that I will say is that Destiny 1 will always, always be the better Destiny game. That is something that I will argue with for the rest of my life. Destiny 2 or any other Destiny games, unless they can top 1, there has not been a Destiny DLC game, whatever you want to call it, that has not topped Destiny 1. And it will never top Destiny 1, all right? But if I could just sit down and kind of explain to you guys Destiny 1, that environment compared to the Destiny 2 environment, so yeah that's why i will be talking on like i will be talking on the history of destiny destiny 2 um you know when it when it went through its changes destiny so yeah like destiny pretty much like past present and future all right so but anyways no when destiny 1 had came out it was a game that i didn't really know too much about and that was like my first time ever sitting down and playing a game like that i've I've never played i prior beforehand like i because it was 2014 when destiny had came out so yeah i was used to playing like battlefield call of duty um what are some other games uh like yeah like any games that was around during that time that's what i was more so playing so yeah like grand theft auto 5 um payday um, I'm trying to think, what are some other games? Yeah, I was playing a bunch of different other games um, besides games like Destiny 1. Like, I hadn't heard of games like Destiny 1. The one game that I had to say that I did know somewhat about, and I did play a little bit um, a little bit of it, is uh, Warframe. And I'm trying to think, I think I might have played Warframe after I got Destiny 1. It, that that might have been the case. I don't know. But anyways, um, so yeah, Destiny 1, I remember the beta had came out. And I didn't even really get a chance to play beta. I think, like, I had started it up, and then I never did play. I think I just, I went to just start it up to just see what it was about. And then after that, I was like, oh, um, whatever. I guess I'll just, you know, go and play something else and things. I don't know why I did that. It was weird. But anyways, so yeah. Start the game up. Um, Didn't play it. Ended up running out of time to play the beta. So I had to wait until uh, um, the game came out to actually sit down and play it. So I, fam, I still even remember when I went into GameStops. They used to have this one GameStops that was like right across the street from this mall. And I was like, that was like the go-to GameStops. That was the GameStops that had it all, right? So anyways, 
And also, by the way, this was like during the Xbox 360 times. Like, Destiny 1 hadn't came out on the Xbox 1 yet. I think it was when they came out with that Taken Kings DLC. That's when they, um, it, it might have been around that time when they added it to uh, Xbox 1 and um, PlayStation 4. But so anyways, um, so yeah, Destiny 1 coming out on the Xbox 360. I remember going to the um, GameStops. Everybody was there for that game. I mean, everybody was there for it. And I, the, the funny thing was, is like I had a friend that had worked up there, and so I don't know, I, I don't know, I don't think it would, he couldn't hold the game for me. And so yeah, I was like, it was just one of those things where it's like first come first serve. But I probably would that. I think if if anything's, I probably would have just went and got me some uh, Xbox like point cards. And then, uh, well, no, I think they had just, I think they had changed it to the currencies. Like, they, they had stopped doing the points at some point in time, and then they changed it. But anyways, regardless, I would have just bought me an Xbox um, a money card, and then just, yeah, just went and bought it uh, digitally and stuff. So, um, but no, I remember I went in there, bought the game. But no, it was funny because right before I had bought the game, this kid was up there. He was trying to get a separate game. But I remember this this kid, I kid you guys not. I might have talked on this before. But anyways, the kid, he was in there trying to buy some rated M game. And, of course, you know, like, with a rated M game, like, if they can't see that you're an adult, then, you know, yeah, they're going to have to ID you. Clearly, this was a kid. This was a child. And he's in line, right? He puts the game on the counter, and the neighbors are like, well, do you have ID or do you have somebody with ID? This kid, he tried to like be discreet about it, tried to be all secretive about it. This kid really slid up his school ID card. And it's like, fam, not not that like Washington State ID. He's like, what state are we in right now? And I'm like, you know, the, the kid got a point. I'm like, just give him the game. But no, it was funny because the GameStop's employee, he was all like, no, you need like a Washington State. But I mean, yeah, we I mean, we are in Washington State. It was a state issue ID. I mean, the, the school is in the state. So technically... The kid could have got the game if he won, but he had to be of age. I think they should have worded it that way and stuff, but anyways, yeah, I just, that was, it was such like, that was like when, I had to say that was like one of the last few times I had seen um, a game get so much hype because that GameStops was busy. Like other days, I remember going into that GameStops. I think I remember one of the last few times I went into that GameStops, it was after work. It was pouring down rain, and I think I was I think I was just out shopping around, but then it was because it was raining so bad, I remember I went to that GameStops, and I just sat in there and waited, and I was like talking with the uh, cashier in there and stuff. I think, I, yeah, it was a friend of mine from school. He even had came in there, and we were just kind of just sitting in there just talking about video games and about life and stuff, and that was like one of the last few times I was in that GameStops. That GameStops was like the OG. Out of all the GameStops I've been to, there's like the one that they had in this, um, like in this uh, basement part of uh not basement but it was like in this like garage level of this mall in seattle and um no it was like between that oh and bro i wonder if they still got that game stops there they probably closed that game stops down i should go to seattle one of these days just to see how much has changed because it's it's been a minute since i've walked around seattle like last time i walked around seattle was right before the pandemic so other than that i've driven through seattle but i haven't like walked around like how i would use like how i used to and stuff when i worked out there but anyways but no getting back to destiny i ain't got a lot of topic and things but so anyways I remember downloading Destiny. I remember, um, like, I honestly, I don't remember playing it. I don't, because I think I played it so much that it just, it literally had wiped my memory. Like, I remember some key moments of, like, me and my friends playing uh, Crucible and then doing some raids and doing some strikes and uh, nightfalls. But it's like, like, small, it's kind of like when you're trying to think of stuff that happened when you were a kid. Like, you know you had a good childhood, but you only remember, like, the highlights of it and stuff. So, yeah, but I, I when I tell you guys I had put some hours into Destiny 1, bro, could not bring me away from that game. I was playing that game day and night, bro. Day and night. I remember me and my friends, because the friend group that I would play games with, originally we were playing uh, Grand Theft Auto. And then uh, once when Destiny 1 had came out, then we had just switched to that. I think it was like, I remember one of my friends, because he would want to do like a lot of different glitches and stuff in Grand Theft Auto. And then once, yeah, we had just was like, no, no more of that. <laughs> we got we to gotta do something else. And Destiny 1, it came out just in time for us to start focusing on, um, in on another game. And bro, I'm telling you, like me and this friend group, 
we would sit down and we would play this game like I had met then it was funny because then there was another kid that I had went to school with and I didn't really know him like that but no we had ended up becoming friends by playing Destiny and so it was like I it's just it's crazy it's crazy on how many people I became friends with after I had graduated from high school but yeah it was like that's, that's just crazy but anyways so we're like just day and night playing Destiny 1 Taken King DLC. Well, I think they did they come out. I think they came out with like two other DLCs before they came out with that Taken King DLC. Regardless, though, but they were coming out with DLCs. You best believe I was going out. I didn't drop my controller. You best believe I was going out and uh, buying them and stuff. Then that Taken King DLC came out, and it just, yeah, I was like, fam, I, yeah, it was like, that's, in my opinion, one of the best DLCs to come out for video games. Like, because I, the thing is, like, if you guys know me, you know I played a lot of different video games. Like, I can honestly show you guys my collection of video games on uh, Steam, Xbox, PlayStation, and just even, like, some secondary ones where it's, like, I don't really play on them, but I still got some games on there, too. Like, fam, I got a gang of games, games I ain't put money into, games I ain't spent hours playing, bro, but Destiny and their DLCs and how they was going about, bruh, could not be topped, all right? So, anyways, Taken King DLC comes out. Me and my friends were just grinding in that. And, when, and, bro, when I tell you guys, because, like, I didn't even really know too much about Destiny at the time. And then, like, fast forward, then I started getting into content creating. So then I was, like, that was, like, one game. I was, like, if you go back and watch, especially when I had got my capture card, if you go back and watch some of my Xbox 360 and Xbox One videos, bro, I had, like, series of videos that I was doing just for Destiny 1. From engram openings, weapon testings, doing missions. I'm saying, like, I, you could not bring me away from Destiny all right let me just see how many videos i have of uh destiny real quick because yeah like destiny i'm telling you bro that like i already know like with destiny one and two combined oh yeah i already know i got a gang of videos of uh but uh, let me let me just look it up real quick and on top of that then it was like with well playing destiny um uh two but uh so i so i did I was just, okay, so here, here we go, here we go, so, like, last few videos I did, dang, it was, like, it was a year ago, where I was, like, I sat down and was, like, doing, uh, some weapon testing videos and stuff, that was in Destiny 2, then I did some, uh, streams, then I was just doing, like, just some, uh, other videos and stuff, wait, how many videos, okay, hold on, let me, like, put it on the, like, uh, 50... So is it like 242? Dang, 242. And that's like including streams. Uh, but anyways, all right. So, uh, okay. So then I, so then I've seen why I had started playing Destiny uh, 2. That was in September 2017. So from, so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay. Uh, eight, nine, ten, eleven. So that's just that's too too much counting. Yeah, I realized I was gonna be counting for a while, but it's a gang of videos, bruh. Like I didn't even like I and it was in, oh then that's like then that was another thing. Okay, let me see how many uh if I search up Ingram, that's like not even including the Ingram opening videos. So I was like, yeah, I did like last Ingram. Dang, last Ingram opening I did was in twenty twenty. But I did all together, I think I did uh, 60, either 68 or 69 uh, engram openings. Because it was just, that's all, fam. That's all that I was doing. Like, I was sitting down playing Destiny left and right, left and right. And plus, on top of that, it was like, it was just, it was um easy videos to do. Especially at the time with the laptop that I had. Because the laptop, it couldn't really sit down and record uh, long videos and stuff. So the engram openings, I only spent like maybe a few minutes doing those so i was like yeah bro i was doing as much content as i possibly could with destiny and um yeah then it was like you know i just sitting down playing that game then they came out with i think it was like the rise of iron and then that's when they added like a whole new um like uh like um safe house like area and stuff and that was dope and then they had like an easter egg where you had to like pretty much rock climb without your hands and then i was like i'm telling you every aspect of that game occupied my time from doing uh strikes from doing there was this other mode in there where it was like a three-person mode and then you would go up against like hordes of enemies and stuff and then you'll have to like go um you get like treasure at the end like i can't even think of the name of that mode but anyways i was playing that 
um, a little bit of Crucible Strikes. I did maybe a few Nightfalls and Raids. Um, but yeah, like that, I had to say Destiny is the reason why I appreciate playing games by myself. Because at some, there would be days where me and my friends, we wouldn't even be playing that game. I'd just be playing that game just to be playing it and stuff. Because like the one friend, so me and the other friend, we both had graduated. And then there was the, um, the, I think it was the other two. I hadn't really known the one yet, but, um, I think, I think he, yeah, he think, I think he graduated the same year as the other friend that was still in high school and stuff. But so, yeah, there was the one that was still in high school. And so I was like, yeah, so I was like kind of just sitting around the house and stuff trying to figure out like what I wanted to do. Cause I had just graduated from school. So I was all like, dang, I don't know whether I want to do military. I don't know whether I want to go out and get a job. And then that's when I figure out I'll just do content creating and stuff. So yeah, then I was like, so that was uh, the main reason why I was doing like more so like PC gaming stuff and things. But anyways, um, but yeah, like Destiny was just occupying my time and stuff. So I was like, I couldn't, you know, really, yeah, it was like, I was just chilling and stuff. So, but anyways, so yeah, just playing like a handful of Destiny and then, uh, um, then yeah, fast forward 2017, Destiny 2 comes out. Or they at least they're announcing that game. And so I was, I'm trying to think, I wonder if I did a reaction video where I had talked on. Hold on, let me see. Okay, so these videos had uploaded onto my gaming channel. Because I'm like uploading a bunch of different streams onto my uh, gaming channel. So I'm, yeah, it's just... It's like a thousand plus streams, I think, and it's 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 a lot, bro. But anyways, let me see if I did do a reaction to uh, Destiny 2. I don't think I did. Oh, no way, I did. I did. No, yeah, I did a couple. I, no, I did a few. Um, Dang, they got rated. Yeah, that was during the time where I was just getting hated on for no reason and stuff, or just more so because, yeah, just, you know, haters didn't like the fact that I was being successful in things, so... But um no I did I did a uh, trailer when uh, they did the official gameplay reveal and that was in on um, May twenty fourth of twenty seventeen and then yeah later on that year Destiny two came out and the thing was this like I had to say I didn't appreciate Destiny two when it came out because I I, I don't know maybe because I was working and I didn't really have enough time to play it but even the times when I would play it it was like it didn't hit like how uh, Destiny one had hit so I'll admit. Like, I wasn't really playing Destiny 2 like that. And then I had to say, at some point in time, that's when I had started. Like, sometime after the game had came out, that's when I had started getting into uh, Destiny 2. Because I think they started doing, like, that Halloween um, season, like, updates and stuff. Where you had to, like, go and do some, like, um, just random missions. And I remember I was playing a little bit of that. And then just kind of, you know, getting through the story and the DLCs and all that stuff. And then, uh, yeah, then I think I remember when I had, um, started playing it even more, um, I think, I think it was when the pandemic had started, and I started playing it, um, more, I think either doing videos or streaming at the time, whichever I was doing, but I do remember I was streaming it for a little bit, I was streaming it for a little bit, and then, um, yeah, then it was like, fam, that was like, I was appreciating it, I was like, fam, I don't know why I wasn't playing this game, I'm kinda mad at myself for not playing it, oh, then that was another thing, then they had, like, that season pass stuff in there and so at one point in time what destiny um to uh two was doing was that you didn't have to buy uh like a, t a second or the t uh, like a tier thing for the season pass if you played that game all right and you managed to get all the way towards the end like you collected everything's not just one half you know you collected it all like all the stuff that was in the season pass they figured if you bought the game because i'm my thing is is this a $60 game, because I'm trying to think, how much did I spend? I remember they came out with a special edition of Destiny 2, and I remember I bought that, I think it was on the PlayStation, and then I bought it again on the Xbox, and I'm thinking to myself, fam, I put money into this game. Why are you charging me? So then, like, I'm, okay, so I'm, I'm gonna be talking on the downfall of, at least my downfall with Destiny and stuff, but so anyways... So yeah, they had it where pretty much you did not have to like work for nothing in that game. And so, or like you did like by just playing it and grinding and stuff. But other than that, like more so you didn't have to like put no money into it besides just buying the game, DLCs, and you was good and stuff. So then at some point in time, they decided that we're just going to change the game and we're not going to ask nobody for this, you know, change and stuff. We're just going to change it just to change it. So they said that they were going to make the game free to play. All right, cool, chill. You know, I'm not tripping about it. It's like, yeah, I put money into the games, whatever. 
Then they got rid of the main story. And I'm thinking to myself, I bought the game. I enjoyed the main story. At least you could have had an option where we could have went back and forth from like, oh, do you want to uh, play the old story or do you want to play the new story? You just took the story all the way out and then just expected us to be cool with it. Then on top of that, they're claiming, okay, so like I said, they claimed that the game was free to play, right? So if the game is free to play, now this the reason why I had mentioned the one game Warframe is because I, I want y'all to pay attention to a couple of details that I picked up from both Warframe and that I picked up from Destiny um, 2. With Warframe, they have it where, yes, you have to pay for the, well, the thing is this, you don't have to pay for the cosmetics and all that stuff in there. If you want to, you very well can. But at the end of the day, if you want to grind for that stuff in that game, you very well can do that. You don't have to pay for nothing in that game. You can grind as much as you want to, and you ain't got to pay for nothing. I I had that game for almost either over or no, exactly 10 years or almost 10 years. And it wasn't until this year when I finally had put $10 into that game just so I can unlock a character. But other than that, everything in that game is free. They have it where they have the original story where you're just going from planet to planet, just, you know, killing enemies and stuff. Then they got this new story. And I'm thinking to myself, bruh, how is it that you guys, Warframe, you've been around for almost 10 years have yet to charge anybody for anything in that game. Yeah, you probably have made some money off of that game. I ain't gonna lie. But at the end of the day, a person can just sit down, grind, and play that game without having to put no money into it. Meanwhile, Destiny, you guys then came out with two games. Two games since Warframe has released. How much money have you made off of Destiny? Because the thing is this. I feel like it's a lose-lose situation because... If you haven't made as much money as Warframe, then my thing is this. That was just an unsuccessful game from the start. Because literally, Warframe and Destiny is one and the same. Warframe might be a tad bit challenging, but there it's literally the same game. It, it's like comparing Dark Souls and Elden Rings. It's literally the same game, just by two different companies, but it's the same game. But my thing is this. By you going down the route where you're going to charge people money for this game, and then yet you're still not successful in Warframe, and it's like, and I, I just, it, it confuses me. Like, I am in a confusion right now on how does Warframe not charge nobody for nothing, and they're still more successful than Destiny. And you're by a bigger company, too. You guys are on more platforms. That, to me, I'm like, nah, bruh. And then, yeah, then with this last DLC, I don't think I've ever seen a, um, a, a DLC get so many bad reviews. But I think it was the Lightfall DLC. Hold on for a second. Destiny 2, Lightfall. Uh, oh, they have it where you could get it for um, $20 and stuff. I'm like, it's just, to me, it's not worth it. But, um, no, hold on for a second. Does it still? Yeah. Um, mostly negative, and then the recent reviews have been very negative. And when you uh look at so just so just so reading off some of the DLC, so they're all like the most viral DLC or not DLC, but um um review. Uh, somebody said made me quit the game for good. DLC keeps getting worse. It can't be this hard. Then somebody, another person. So those are from two different people. Then the one guy said, "Just retcon Nimbus." All right, wait, what? Retcon Nimbus? What does that mean? Hold on, let me Google that real quick. Flying Nimbus characters, DBZ, Dragon. Wait, what? What are you talking about? I'm like, sometimes DLCs. There's like, I, I just don't even know what they be talking about and things. But anyway, so then another person says, "Getting nickel, uh, nickel and dimed around every corner is frustrating to say the least." That bar probably has something to do with just playing the game itself. Then I've read now uh, this uh, longer review. So the person says, Described by Bungie as Destiny's um, Infinity War Part 1, but was more nothing but burger. More a nothing burger that features a story whose tone shows this um, dishonest between Bungie's narrative team and their marketing team. Prepare for the end, but don't forget about your spunky new sidekick and training montage. Explore the city of uh, Neo Muna, but it's not Neo Muna. You're on the outskirts of the larger city. You're told uh, so uh, 
you are told so much about the larger story the larger area but you don't get to experience it so pretty much they just jipping people they're all like oh yeah we're we're having it where we're gonna be adding this but this dlc came out back in february and it still got um bad ratings and stuff and that just shows me where it's all like and so just recently all right now talking on like you know kind of just because yeah i just feel like i was still in like that um past part but now talking on what's going on in the present right now so destiny um or bungie had laid off um like probably a hundred uh employees and then they're saying that you know we're trying to make the game better blah 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 and all that other stuff and then they were blaming management and all that my thing is is this if you knew, all right, even if, like, even my thing is this, because I know if I'm going to be getting into a contract with somebody, I'm reading that contract. I'm making sure that I have full control. Like, if you're just be being bought out just so you guys can market yourself better, that's what the contract needed to be. But when so you start putting other people in control of a game, and then you're having it where the game is just failing day after day after day, bruh, my thing is, is this, why would you guys sell yourselves off to some management that you guys want to blame in the first place because my thing is this if i'm doing perfectly fine you guys is doing perfectly fine with destiny 1 you guys is doing perfectly fine with destiny 2 when it originally came out and now all of a sudden because my thing is this i don't want to put all of the blame on management because if it was really that much of a problem you guys would have said something a long time ago but you ain't gonna wait up until right before your guys' DLC comes out, and then you're trying to... Because my thing is, is this, all right? I listen, just... I, I know this is gonna sound a little bit weird, what I'm about to say, and it sounds like it's not gonna have nothing to do what I'm with what I'm about to say, but I listen to a lot of music, and I watch a lot of wrestling. Now, what does that mean? What does that have to do with um, Destiny 2? When... A wrestler is trying to market his uh, match, you know, get more ticket sales for their match, his or hers match or something. They start attacking other wrestlers or they start attacking the, attacking the wrestler that they're wanting, you know, that they're going to wrestle at some pay-per-view. They come out with these videos. They'll say stuff on social media. Same with the music artists. When they're when they know that they're about to Kanye West for an example, when they know that they're about to release an album, they start saying and doing crazy things on the internet. Look at what Kanye West what he recently um was not I mean not recently, but the last um time when we seen him talking about stuff on the internet and he was saying anti um anti Semitic stuff and things. I'm saying it's like when I see things like that, it puts my trust in you guys a lot lower. Because my thing is, is this. If I want to impress people with a game, I'm making sure of it that I'm impressing people with the game. But I'm not going to be going out on social media talking about, oh, well, we're doing this. We're working on... Just do it, bruh. It's like literally a whole Nike saying that is being set here. Just do it. Just release whatever DLC you guys are wanting to release. Have it where it comes out for free. Have it where you're giving back to the fans. But my thing is, is this. If this DLC comes out and you guys are charging money like... Because this is what I would like to see. Now talking on the future. This is what I would like to see from Destiny. Destiny needs to be in the same marketplace when it like Warframe. Where if you want people to pay for the cosmetics, the weapons and all of that. They have that choice. But if they're one to grind while well, playing a raid mission or playing a nightfall or playing a strike or just playing one of the regular missions, playing Crucible, whatever the situation is, they you guys need to have it where we're grinding for that stuff. Get rid of the season pass. Because at the end of the day, there are so many games out there where oh, the only game that needs a season pass is Fortnite. But because the thing is this. Yeah, I get that Fortnite they have it where you can pay for, like, the cosmetics and all that stuff. But at least they have it where the games in there, the only game that I think you really have to pay for is the story um, mode in there. Other than that, all those um extra game modes that the fans are creating, you get to play that stuff. They just recently added the OG map. They ain't making no money off of it. The only thing that they're making money off of is the season pass. That's the only thing that they're charging for. But at the end of the day, the game is free, though. But if you guys are going to so-called claim that your guys' game is free, why is it that people are only allowed to play to a certain part of the game and then they got to pay for the DLCs? That ain't cool, bruh. That is not cool at all. 
So what you guys need to do is have it where this DLC and the rest of the game needs to be free. Because the fans, we're tired of putting money into a game. And then we're only getting a few missions. They have it. No, hold on for a second. Let me read this um DLC. So they have it where they was all like, yeah, they said there was a new destination. Um, I guess a new enemy and then a new campaign. I remember what people were saying that the campaign missions didn't really have a whole lot of missions. Um, the enemies, I, or no, this is supposed to be like some new, or a subclass. So yeah, they did add like a new subclass for your character and stuff. Okay, cool. New destination. Based off of what people were saying, it didn't sound all that new. So what you guys need to do is have it where the DLCs are free. Because ain't nobody trying to pay. And then that's the most messed up part about it. There's like popular use uh, defined tags for this product. They got free to play. But if you look down, they have two different versions of this DLC that you can buy. You can buy just the DLC itself, which is $50. And then you can buy the DLC and the annual pass for $100. Since when did a DLC cost $100? When at any given point in time, maybe it is management, but I know uh, Destiny, I know Bungie, somebody has to sign off on that stuff. And whether, I don't know who it is that's coming up with these prices, but these prices are all off. So the game needs to be free. That's the main thing I think everybody would like to see, is that you're giving back to the fans. Give them weapons that you know, like a, a, a good weapon of some sorts. You know, yeah, give them like some exotic engrams. G literally, give back to the fans. But if you're not going to give back to the fans, then you might as well just say goodbye to uh, the Destiny franchise and all that stuff. Because I know me, I'm not going to be paying for no more things in Destiny. I pay for everything that I need to pay for. I pay for the game. I pay for the other DLCs that came out before these Lightfalls and free-to-play DLCs and all that stuff. I have even paid for the DLCs when it um, became free-to-play. But I will not put no more money into this game. If I can't enjoy the game with the content that I got, fam, then it the game ain't meant for me. It is not meant for me. I don't care what anybody has to say about Destiny. Because I remember the last time I remember I talked on Destiny on YouTube. And people were trying to defend this game. And they were trying to say, oh, Destiny 2 has been the best state that it's ever been. If it's been the best state, why'd they just have to get rid of 100 employees? If, they're, if it's in the best state, they shouldn't have to, they should be hiring more people because it's more work that they're having to be put on their heads. So the game isn't in a good state. You got people that would rather go back and play Destiny. I guarantee and I promise you, if they were to re-release, or yeah, let's say they were to remaster Destiny 1, right? I guarantee, and they were to release it on um, PC. So yeah, they release it on PC. They have it where you can uh, play all the DLCs and all that stuff. I guarantee and I promise you, that game will be much more successful than Destiny 1. Put it to the test. I, I would love to see that. I would love to see Bungie re-release Destiny 1. And I guarantee and I promise you, if they were to re-release that game on PC, there would be no. I guarantee and I promise you, that game will be much more successful than Destiny um, 2. I promise you that if they were to re-release Destiny 1. I promise you that. Whatever the bet is, I promise you, unless Bungie somehow, some way screws that up too. If the, But if they don't, and they just literally copy and paste, change some things up, like, you know, maybe have it where the visuals is like the Destiny 2. Because I'll say that the Destiny 2 visuals, it was nice. I'll admit that, alright? But at the end of the day, when it comes to gameplay, and then the longevity of gameplay, Destiny 1 by far beats Destiny 2. But no, just I Bungie, that is something that I would like for you guys to put to the test. Either re-release Destiny 1 on PC, or... Uh, make uh, Destiny 2 actually free to play. But don't have it where it's just free to download. But we're paying $100 for a DLC and an annual pass. I right, yeah, bro. I'm good. So, But anyways, and that being said, I will talk to y'all later. Thank you guys for watching and or listening. Stay tuned for the next episode. Make sure you like and subscribe if you're viewing this on YouTube. Follow or subscribe if you're viewing this on the podcast streaming service. Make sure you follow me across all the social media platforms at Boss. Thank you guys for watching and or listening, and peace.